this case came up on my Facebook news feed yesterday and I haven't seen any updates as of right now. I'm going to continue to look into this. Um, this is a missing person named Katie White or Katie Massey. Has not been heard from since Thursday, November the 16th at 6.30 a.m. when she called her this person that posted this, her friend or a family member. At around 7 a.m., she left a hotel, I think it was the Comfort Inns in Moorhead, Kentucky, which is in Rowan County. The hotel staff reported that she left the hotel at around 7 a.m., telling someone there that she was going to look around the town, but she never returned to her room. She left her mom's home from Kitts Hill, Ohio, with no belongings the night before. She currently is driving a baby blue Subaru Crosstrek. She has multiple tattoos, including an hourglass, um, a fairy, and she has facial piercings. There are pictures, I will post those. She has blonde hair and green eyes. Now, in this photograph, she's wearing glasses, but I don't know if she wears them all the time. Um, it's unknown which location she was headed, but she has her phone turned off with no way for anyone to contact her. If you have any information that has some names here, I will post this link to this Facebook uh, post in the comments of this video. A missing persons report has been made with the Lawrence County Sheriff's Department. Her car has a holographic Animal Crossing leaf on one of the ba on the back window. So now this is um, West Virginia license plate, Marshall University. And I'm looking through the comments to see if there's anything more updated. Some people are saying maybe she's fine and just went off to live in a new city. And the person comments back and says, maybe you didn't mean it to sound rude, but that sounds rude. Who would just go off and not talk to their mother? Now this woman adds a Marshall license plate with a floral license plate cover that says, let's go on an adventure. Someone recommends that they check with the homeless shelters in that area. Did she leave behind any belongings at the hotel? They said she didn't have any belongings when she left her mother's house in Ohio the night before. I think what a lot of people are wondering was why did she just go out? Was she on a trip? Going on a trip? Did she know people in Moorhead? This woman that posted here says she lives in the Moorhead area. So maybe she was coming to visit her. People are asking if anyone checked with the Rowan County Sheriff's Department or the Kentucky State Police down there. This is very close to Cave Run Lake. Did anyone think to check? Um, the person, the original, the person who originally posted this story says, "I do think she's back in Ironton, Ohio area now." And a, mer a missing persons report has been filed there. If I find out any more information, I will update everyone. Here's what I'm able to put together so far. This young woman, I don't know her age because it doesn't say it here unless they mentioned it in the comments and I just overlooked it. Um... I'm looking at her Facebook page, and it says Alice Katie. And it says that she works in community health professional and studied um, science at the Ohio University and studied psychology at Marshall. 
So I'm going to add what I can. I'm going to continue to look for more um, comments and anything that I may find. And if there's an update later that says that she's been located, I will come back and do a follow-up on her. But I just wanted to include her. Anyone who may be in the areas between Moorhead and Ironton, Ohio, be on the lookout for this little car, this little Subaru light baby blue cross trek. And I will continue to look for more info on her. I'm a little bit behind on my videos um, with the holidays. And I've had a lot of stuff going on. I've just kind of fallen away from working on this channel. And I apologize to the supporters and to everyone who's followed me. And I wanted to talk a little bit about this girl. This is... Um, Layla Santanello, and this was posted in September of 2023. I'm going to look her up and see if there's been any updates. Layla Marie Santanello, 20 years old, was last seen June the 27th, 2023, in Kingsport, Tennessee. Layla was last seen at an ice cream shop on 2003 Northeast Monroe and hasn't been heard from since. According to witnesses, she spent the night at the AmeriCourt Hotel in um, Kingsport, Tennessee. She was going door to door of the motel wearing a white tank top, black leggings, and no shoes. Around noon, she was seen at the Marble Slab Creamery Ice Cream Shop on or uh, Northeast Monroe. She told an employee there that she was going to the nearby Five Below store to buy some shoes, but she never made it there. The last confirmed sighting of Layla was at the ice cream shop. Layla has not been seen or heard from since. A family member reported her missing to the Kingsport Police Department when they could not contact her. Investigators were able to track Layla's steps from the Amara Court to the Green Belt and then to the ice cream shop on the 27th, but no further clues as to her whereabouts. No clues were found. Layla's mother has hired a private investigator to help look for her daughter. An anonymous tip line was set up at 423-212-5804. All of this information will go to the investigator. In accordance with the Holly Bobo Act, Layla is considered an endangered young adult. She is only 4 foot 10 inches tall and weighs about 130 pounds. She has blonde hair and brown eyes. If you have any information about Layla, you may contact the number that I've listed or the Kingsport Police Department at 423-343-9780 or the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation at 1-800-TBI-FIND. It just says that she is classified as endangered and there's really not a whole lot more circumstances. She has a multiple, she has multiple tattoos including the Roman, numer Roman numerals on her collarbone and the name Nova Grace on her left forearm. She was last seen wearing a white tank top, black leggings, and barefoot. There is a $2,000 reward offered for any information about her. Where it goes to. Join the search for Layla Santanello. Sometimes you read comments and stuff, you will see stuff that's more, that gives a little bit more information. There's a few YouTube about her, some TikTok. Um, I will post the link to this page in case anyone would like to read a little bit more. The page was only created, um, let's see, this was four days ago. I'm Layla's mom, and I want to personally thank each and every one of you for joining the search for Layla. We are grateful for you and desperately need your help. Feel free to invite anyone to this group 
and help us search for her and see what I can find on her. Some of these posts just do not provide a whole lot of background, you know, into the person. But if she was staying at the Amara Court Hotel and she had, she was barefooted, that probably means that she did not have any shoes at the hotel. She was going door to door. Did anybody at the hotel say what she was asking? When she was, was she coming up to people's doors and asking for shoes or money or um, anything? Did they give a reason why she was going to the doors? How far can you go without shoes, someone asks. This is on Web Sleuths. I want to remain victim friendly, but I can't help but wondering why was she going door to door and then went into the trees, like out into the wooded area, if she was barefoot, um, maybe she wasn't in her right state of mind. Did the person at the ice cream shop speak to um, her state of mind? Her mother talks here and says it's a roller coaster. Some days are better than others. Other days you're kind of in a fog and you don't know which way to look. We're not going to find her without help. Someone out there knows something and we just want someone to come forward. There has to be someone who saw her after she left the marble slab creamery. Now, she's, she must have had a little bit of money because if she was going to five below to buy a pair of shoes, even if it was house shoes, um, did she buy anything at the marble slab creamery did she buy food there this story is just definitely not getting as much attention as it should be we need people to share we need people to get involved in this on november the 11th the family well okay so this was a week ago the family conducted a community search in the greenbelt area behind the east stone commons shopping center We've got a lot of people following the story. A lot of people ask how they can help. Um, if we don't find her, then I'm hoping we can find some evidence to investigate. As it gets colder, we're desperate to find her. Now, it's been several months, almost five months. And I'm just reading some of the comments on Web Sleuths. There's another girl who is said to be missing as well and was supposed to have been a friend of Layla's named Holland Snap. This is from WCYB. This was dated November the 6th, so it's rather recent. An endangered young adult alert in accordance with the Holly Bobo Act is in effect for 19-year-old Holland Snap. Holland's fa family said they haven't heard from her since October the 5th. Now a month has gone by with still no answers as to what happened. Holland was adopted at the age of 10 by her mom Heather after being part of a foster family. Now, her foster mom had her um, is involved in helping to search for her. So both of the mothers are working together. I was so happy to become a parent in this way. She was really my firstborn, said her adopted mother. Holland was last seen, reportedly last seen, in the Bell Ridge Drive area in Kingsport, Tennessee. A, a missing persons report was filed on October the 15th. And her family says that her disappearance is extremely out of character. Somebody out there knows something. There has to be somebody that knows where she could be. We will be extremely grateful for any information. We just know that she, if she was near a phone or a computer, that she would definitely reach out to us. She would contact somebody. This is unlike her. Um, 
and it says here that her mentality functions are lesser than her actual age. So her mother says that she's 19, but she, her, her mentality, her behavior, her reasoning is more like that of a 9 or 10 year old. She has been in mental health um, difficulties in her lifetime. And they were struggling to find treatment for her. We just want to get her back and help her to get into a healthy state of mind. Um, family says, we are praying for you. Once before I told you every day that I will sit by my phone and wait for you to contact me. The investigation is ongoing with the Sullivan County Sheriff's Office. If you have any information regarding Holland's whereabouts, you're asked to contact 423-279-7330 or 1-800-TBI-FIND. This is from the U.S. Sun, and it says, Dark clues in Layla Santinello's disappearance and an eerie link to another missing girl. Layla Santinello was last seen in Kingsport on June the 27th. She was last seen at an ice cream shop. She wasn't wearing any shoes. She told the employee that she was going to a nearby Five Below to buy shoes, but they said she never came in. Holland Snap went missing October the 15th in Kingsport, and the mothers of these two missing women are working together to try to come up with new leads. Layla's mother noticed both missing women are under five feet tall with a similar build. The mothers of the missing women also recently discovered that Layla and Holland ran in the same social circles and may have known each other. Now, the foster mother contacted, um, they came, they, they thought that this was a possible link between the cases. It's been a nightmare, said Heather Snap, Holland's adoptive mother. I mean, it's horrible to wake up every day and think, where is my daughter? Heather told NBC affiliate WCYB5 that Holland is a very sweet and trusting girl. Um, she functions at an IQ of around 9 to 10 years of age. This makes her especially vulnerable to people. Heather says that she thinks Holland could have been a victim of human trafficking. Both of the girls could have been. Um, authorities organized a search for Layla in August in the area where she was last seen. They have no leads in the case. The search did not come up with any evidence that could help in her disappearance. We have no concrete evidence. All we have is speculations. But the fact that they may have known each other, they may have hung around together or hung around the same people is one theory that they could both have been the victim of the same person, or victims of the same person, or victims of a group of people. Um, Jennifer is especially worried about the impact of Layla's disappearance on her daughter. Whatever might have happened, that little girl is going to need to know something. I don't want her to grow up in a situation not knowing. I don't think that that's fair to her. They say it takes a village to raise a child, and I believe it's going to take the community coming together to help find Layla and Holland. We have exhausted who we know to reach out to. The One of the mothers noticed that the two women were similar in height and weight, very tiny women, very small and could have come across as young girls, um, especially Holland, who's only, I mean, they were both very small-made women, 
and whoever picked them up could have seen them as much younger than their actual age. And Holland only functioned, even though she was 19 years old, mentally she functioned at around a nine-year-old. There's some comments here. It says, do the cameras around these stores work at all? We all know that cameras are on every store and every street corner now. There has to be descriptions of cars. Someone had to have seen them on camera walking between the stores, between the different, uh, along the sidewalks. So did the police search these cameras at all these different stores? Uh, the place where um, Layla was last seen at a at a ice cream shop was in like a little shopping center. So we all know that all those places have cameras up everywhere now. How in the hell is it that, now this is a comment from one of the people on this um, story, how in the hell does it happen that the police can't put these two cases together but the parents can? That just goes to show that the police are really not taking these cases seriously. I hope and pray that these girls are found and brought home. Um, it doesn't matter if they are 15 or 50, they are still your child. Human trafficking is real. Check out the Caged No More and Tim Tebow Foundation. And this is in no way to say that anything that happened to them was of their own doing, but a lot of people are asking um, why is it that the police can find these people when they're searching for them but when they're lost and missing, they can't seem to put any effort into looking for them or to find them. So that these are just some comments on this. Really, there hasn't been anything else. Um, they were able to trace Layla's steps from the AmeriCorps Hotel to the Green Belt and then to the ice cream shop on the 27th, but no further clues about her whereabouts have ever been found. Multiple agencies searched the Greenbelt Trail and the surrounding areas with the help of drones and canines. And that is pretty much it. Layla is 4 foot 10 inches tall, weighs 135 pounds with brown, blonde hair and brown eyes. She was last seen June 26th in the area of the American of American Way in Kingsport. Last date of contact October the 5th, 2023, 19 years of age. Her name is Holland Snap. Uh, she's white, four foot eight, and weighs about 90 pounds. Her last known location was in Kingsport, Tennessee. She has been, she has not been active on her social media since October the 4th. She has shoulder length brown hair and hazel eyes. She has a tattoo of a pyramid with a circle around it on her right arm. Um, there's a picture of her here, and she just looks like a little girl. She, she looks like she might be 11 or 12 years old. She's very small, and um, this could have also made her more vulnerable to someone. Like the family said, she functions around the age of 9 or 10, and her body, her, her size puts her to look like she could be 11 or 12, 13 maybe, and so this could have made her more vulnerable. She may have been picked up by somebody who assumed that she was an underage child. And she was only 19, so it's just really um, scary out there. And I'm going to continue to look and see what else I can find on these two women. And if I find any news or if I hear of any updates, I will do a follow-up.